Previously on Phil's Computer Lab in Intel vs AMD. In episode 1, Intel's Pentium 4 3.2 GHz went up against AMD's Athlon XP 3200+. In episode 2, with the help of the Enforce 2 chipset and fast dual channel memory, the XP managed to get pretty close to the Pentium 4. For this episode, and based on viewer comments, I'm using a faster graphics card as well as Intel's 875 chipset with PAT performance acceleration technology. All up, four motherboards with different chipsets and three processors are going to be compared in this video. So let's find out what impact the faster graphics card has on the results and is the 875 chipset worth getting. Enjoy this video. Let's have a look at the parts I'm using. For socket A we've got a Gigabyte GA7VT600. That motherboard has the VIA KT600 chipset. We have the ABIT NF7S with Enforce 2 400 Ultra chipset and dual channel memory support. For the Pentium 4 we've got the AOPEN MX4SG4DN. This is the motherboard with the Intel 865 chipset. And finally we have a motherboard from Intel, the D875PBZ with the Intel 875 chipset. Here we got the AMD Athlon XP3200+. New in this video is the Intel Pentium 4 with 3 GHz. And of course the Intel Pentium 4 running at 3.2 GHz from the previous video. Two sticks of DDR400 memory running at 3338 memory timings. This is the cooler I'm using for the Pentium 4 socket 478. It's all copper, not sure what the brand is, but it works really well. For the socket A, I've got an Arctic cooling copper silent 3. Especially for the Pentium 4, using good thermal paste is actually quite important, so I'm going with the Arctic cooling MX4. New in this video is a faster graphics card. It's the MSI NVIDIA GeForce 6800 GT with 256 megabyte of memory. I've also changed the sound card, this time I'm using a Creative Sound Blaster X5 Extreme Gamer. I'm also using a new hard drive, it's the Western Digital Black 500GB with SATA interface. The SATA ports on the Socket A motherboards really didn't work very well for me, so I'm using a SATA to RDE adapter. A stock standard SATA optical drive and another one with the RDE interface, which I had to use for the Socket A motherboards. I also got a new power supply, it's a Corsair VS450. And for the Socket A motherboards, which are very heavy on the 5 volt rail, I'm using a Macron MPT401, which has a 35 amp rating on the 5 volt rail. And the GoTek USB floppy emulator, very handy. I use this mostly to flash the latest bars. And another new introduction to my channel, it's a custom made test bench, thanks to the world of computer aided design and computer aided manufacturing. Just a few notes on how I do the benchmarking. I always flash the latest bias and then load the bias defaults. If there is a turbo or optimized defaults, I load that. I then disable any onboard devices that are not needed, for example, serial and parallel interfaces, onboard sound, onboard network and fireware and other things like that. I make sure that the memory speed is set to 200MHz and I configure the timings according to the SPD and then confirm in CPU set that they are set to 3338 timings. I then install Windows XP Service Pack 3, load the chipset drivers and I'm using a new video driver version. I'm going with 93.72. This one is a little bit older, but it is more compatible, faster and it also avoids 3 Mark 2003 from crashing on the Athlon XP system. I then install the sound driver for the X5 Extreme Gamer and all the games and benchmarks. I've added a few games, I've got Far Cry now, we also have uh, Comanche 4 and X2 The Threat. I did have to remove Fear, I found that it scaled poorly with the graphics card and I'm gonna uh, reintroduce that game once we move to PCI Express later in this series.
the 6600 GT, the Athlon XP got pretty close to the Pentium 4, but the 6800 GT did a great job at separating the processors a little bit more. It clearly shows that AMD's performance rating of the Athlon XP processors was quite optimistic. Now what about the chipset? In the charts you can see that the 875 is just a tiny bit faster, it's not a big deal. So I recommend you stick with the 865, you'll have a much easier time finding a board and usually the prices will be a lot cheaper too. Crikey, what was that? Intel's Deep Space Reconnaissance is picking up a threat of unknown origin. All that could be made out was this blurry image of an approaching enemy force. And that's it for this episode. The intergalactic war between Intel and AMD continues. So tune in for the next episode of Intel vs AMD soon on Phil's computer lab.